cut it almost in half. You want the bottom part a little bit smaller than the top part. I have a built box. I run it on the table saw all sides. Or you can do it when it's broken down. So you end up with two pieces of a 10 frame deep. So two pieces. Cut it right there. You have two pieces. The bottom piece, you drill a hole in it the size of whatever vacuum line you're using. So the vacuum line fits snug. Okay? You cut a piece of plywood and you put it on the bottom. Nail it permanent. Okay? Then you go to Home Depot and you buy rubber weather stripping. And you now have the bottom to your box. I put the metal tabs on the side to link the entire box together. So that's your bottom. The top piece, which is wider, all right? You cut three quarter by three quarter inch strips. And you put a three quarter inch strip all the way around the inside here to create a lip. And you do the same thing on the bottom, creating a lip all the way around. Does everybody understand that? Yes. So then you staple your screen so it doesn't so it's recessed below the edge of the box. This can be screen, in enclosure screen, but the bees can chew it. So over time, you'll have to watch. I use the metal hardware cloth, 1 8 inch, number 8 hardware cloth. And it's just stapled inside, recessed down in. The top side, you want to get this recessed down in at least 3 quarters of an inch. I go flush with the, you know, the ridge that the frames sit on? Yeah, the, rail. the rail. You just put your three quarter inch strips all the way around. You cut the rail off of one side. So this side still has the, the rail. This side has been cut off flush. And this ridge then gets the rubber stripping. And you cut a piece of plywood as your lid. So this piece of plywood then sits flush with the rubber stripping. All right? In that lid, you have another hole the same size as whatever vacuum line you're using for your vacuum hose to go in here. There's another hole down below, and this one has the screen on the bottom and a little piece of wood that flips back and forth. This controls how much suction you get to suck up the bees. So if your vacuum's really strong, you open it up a lot. If you're using a smaller vacuum, you close it. You can even close it all the way. So the nice thing about this box, so now you have your pieces, your top and your bottom. Then you take a 10 frame deep, Okay, and you set your 10 frame deep on top of your bottom on the rubber seal. Then you put the lid on top. Now the screen is on the bottom, sets right there. Your lid then goes on top. Then you take a ratchet strap or a pull strap and you connect to your side pieces. Now when you pull this tight, it pulls those rubber pieces down and you get a nice seal. Okay? So your vacuum line goes in here. This goes back to your vacuum. That's creating the suction. There's a screen here, remember? So the bees can't get up into the vacuum. And it's wide, so it disperses the suction. So bees aren't getting sucked to one spot. So bees can actually walk around in here. All right? Then this bottom hose is connected in here. This is where you're sucking bees from. Actually, I got these hoses. So this is, I'm vacuuming bees with this side. I can control the suction. If you get too much suction, sucks the bees in, 
and they hit against the back wall and they die. So you regulate your suction. Now, what I like to do is when I'm doing the removal, I set the box up like this. So then when the bees come in, they drop to the bottom. If you have the box like this, sometimes the bees congregate right at the bottom and they'll actually clump and not move and you'll lose your suction and bees will start dying. But if it's up like this, bees fall down in, then they start walking around the box, never gets clogged. Okay? So if I go to a bee removal job and it's just this little thing of bees, right? I use one 10 frame deep, all right? If I go to a, um, a bee job and it's this monster hive and I know that I have a lot of bees, I throw another 10 frame deep and now I've increased the volume of the vacuum. You're no longer emptying the bucket multiple times. You could put another 10 frame deep for as many bees as you want to fit into this vacuum box. Now you can put a rubber seal around this one, or you keep blue tape with you somewhere, blue painter's tape, and you just wrap the seam, which creates your suction, so you don't lose the suction. The strap goes all the way around, and you lay it down on its side, and the bees fall in, and now you have a big volume of space for a lot of bees. Now when you finish your removal, you're always keeping the vacuum running so air is going through. When you finish your removal, while you took off this front lip, you can just loosen your strap a little bit. This slides out the front. It now ventilates the bees. They can't get out because of the screen. So your bees can then fan to keep air going around the box. And how do you take the hose out? Well, while the vacuum is running, okay, you're like this and you're running, and you know you're finished, you pull this out, you still have suction here so the bees aren't coming out, I take a rag, stuff it in the hole, and then I disconnect the suction and take the lid off and the bees are there. Now the nice thing about this box, another nice thing, you have ventilation going on, you have a box of bees that can't go anywhere, so you can put them in your vehicle, you don't need the trailer, okay? <laughs> so now you go home, and I'll take this and set it down right where I'm gonna put my hive, all right? I typically wait until the next day, but you can do it the same day. The bees will start clustering along the top as a swarm, okay? You go out the next morning, keep it in the shade, keep it where if it rains, they don't get wet. You go out the next morning, they're all clustered at the top in one corner. I know the queen's in there because they're all clustering around her. If they're buzzing all around and there's no clustering, there's no queen. So I get to my space, I have a 10 frame deep with frames in it that has the lid on it, sitting right next to me. I take this box, one bounce. All the bees fall to the bottom, I take this lid off. I take my 10 frame deep, set it right on top, because it's the same size, that has frames in it and a lid. Now, I'll sometimes put a queen includer on top, prop two sticks under the lid, the forager bees can come out and start working. The queen's trapped inside. So I'll leave it like that for a day. The bees can come. You'll get them clustering all around the side, thinking, hey, let's get the hell out of here. No, the queen can't leave. So then they start working because the bees always want to crawl up. So they crawl up from the bottom of the box because you banged it right into the 10 frames. So the next day, you now set a bottom board where you want the hive to be. You take the box off the top with all the frames in it. You set it on the bottom board. And the bees loaded themselves into the hive. Okay? 
Now when you do removals, what I used to do before is I'd have a box of bees, I'd have a box of frames, I'd bang it, dump the bees in, hurry up, try to put the lid on, maybe the queen's in there, blah, blah, blah. But what happens is I dump all the insulation, I dump all the dirt, the rocks that I sucked up. This 